All right, and the next lesson on working with our rational expressions. All right, so this one's a little bit more detail-oriented than multiplying and dividing. A little bit more when we add and subtract fractions, as you probably know. All right, so to get you thinking about some of those rules for adding and subtraction uh, fractions, we have four um, small problems for you to do in the opener here. So why don't you go ahead, pause the video, um, add those uh, four sets of fractions there. Um, we'll flip the video back on, we'll see how you do, and then we'll connect that to what we need to do when we're adding and subtracting rational expressions. Okay, so, yes, so multiplying and dividing, much simpler, right? Because you just do numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, then you can reduce, right? Uh, not quite the same when you're adding and subtracting because when we add and subtract fractions, we have to have a like denominator, all right? So that means that there's already an extra level of sophistication within the problem, all right? So now when I look at 2 over 5 plus 3 over 8, all right, I need to find a common denominator uh, for those two fractions. And typically, we try to find the least all right, uh, common denominator, right? That way, we, our numbers don't get too big. So when I look at 5 and 8, my least common denominator all right, um, 8, 16, right, 24, 32, 40, right? So you can count by 8, count by 5, the first number on both lists, right? So in this case, it's 40 and 40. Now, the question is, okay, what do I do and how do I get my new numerator, right? So the idea is really we're going to multiply by 8 in the denominator. 8 times 5 is 40, right? And then I also have to multiply by 8 in the numerator because I'm really multiplying by 1. So 8 over 8, right, is 1. So I'm really not changing anything. So 8 times 2 is 16. And then over on the right side, all right, I have to multiply by 5 over 5. And so notice, even though I'm multiplying by a different number in the denominator, I'm still multiplying by 1, all right, because it's 5 over 5. And so then I get 15 over 40. And once I have those common denominators, now I just add, all right, the numerators, right? So 16 plus 15 is 31 over 40. And notice, the denominator doesn't change. That's telling us what we have. The numerator then is telling us how many of those things we have. So we have 31 40ths. All right, so the 40th is the type of thing we have. All right, so now we move to B. We look at a denominator of 2 and 8. All right, that least common denominator would be 8. All right, and so notice to get to 8 here, I have to multiply by 4 over 4. All right, so negative 4 times 1, or excuse me, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Now, the nice thing is here, we don't have to do anything to the right hand side, right? That already has a denominator of 8, so I can just bring that down, so minus 3 eighths. So negative 4 minus 3 would just be negative 7 over 8. All right, now 13 and 3, all right, least common denominator here would be 39. All right, so I'd multiply this by 3 over 3, all right, and that gives me 12 over 39, and I would multiply this by 13 over 13. All right, and then negative 5 times uh, 13 would be negative 65. All right, and then if I add those together, I get negative 53 over 39. And it's totally good to just leave it like that. We don't need to do any more work. We can leave it as improper. I don't believe we can reduce. And so, so far, we notice we haven't been able to reduce um, anything with a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. And then finally, we have 7 eighths minus 2 fifths. Well, we've already talked about one fraction, part A, with the denominator 8 and 5, so we know it's going to be 40. So 40 and 40, and so I would multiply by 5 over 5, and that gives me 35 over 40. And I'd multiply by 8 over 8, and that gives me 16. And then 35 minus 16 would be 25, 19 over 40. And that's our answer, right? And then if we have a common factor in the numerator and denominator, we would reduce those fractions. But in this case, we do not for any of them, all right? So now, how does that transfer to rational expressions? It's the same process, all right? It's the same process, except, all right, now we have to factor, all right? So this is much like what we did with our multiplying and dividing, and is that we have to factor everything completely so we can see what those factors are in the denominator, so we can see if they are common or not, all right? So we have to do that same way we've been doing everything. We still have to consider those domain restrictions just like we've been doing, right? So once again, we're not just working with integers in our denominator. We're working with polynomials. All right, and so we have to make sure we throw out all right, those values that make the denominator zero. All right, then, just like we did before, we have to find a common denominator. All right, and so then we have to manipulate one or both those expressions based on a new common denominator, just like we did up here, right? So we had to multiply or 
manipulate both denominators here, right? Here we had to multiply or mul manipulate, get to write M word here in a second, manipulate the left hand denominator to get to an eight there. All right, so same ideas, right? Okay, now if we're adding, we add the numerators when we follow our rules, all right, for combining like terms. Now with subtraction, the biggest mistake is people forget to distribute that negative to everything. Now, this is also a little bit more complicated because we could end up with, all right, a polynomial times a polynomial in the numerator. We could end up with a constant times a polynomial. So we're going to have to do some distributing and things like that. All right. Um, and so we have to follow our rules for, for multiplying and combining like terms. All right. And then the other piece is now, right, if we want to reduce, once we get our new numerator, we might have to then try to factor that to see if I have any common factors with the denominator. All right. So it's very much like what we did, but like I said, there's just a little bit more detail work because of the steps involved with getting that common denominator. All right. So let's look at a few examples together. So let's look at number one here. All right. And then once again, I'm just going to do the majority of my work on a blank sheet of paper here just so I can write a little bit larger. All right. And try to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see in the video. All right. So now I see 12 over 2x minus 5 plus 3 over x minus 3. So I need to look, okay, do I have a common denominator, right? All right, and when I look at this, okay, this is in lowest terms. There's nothing to factor out, okay? Right side, lowest terms, there's nothing to factor here, all right? And so I can see, okay, there is not a common denominator, all right? So now it's really like what we did in, in problem up here. We have two different things in the denominator. So now to get my common denominator, all right, I need to multiply this side by x minus 3 over x minus 3. I need to multiply this side by 2x minus 5 over 2x minus 5. All right, so much like what we did, all right, above. All right, so I'm just going to write that out like so. All right, so it looks a lot like what we did right here, right? So multiply by 8 over 8 here, 5 over 5. All right, x minus 3 over x minus 3, 2x minus 5 over 2x minus 5. All right, so we can see that it's a very similar setup to what we've been doing. All right, uh, no, I skipped to step two. So the one thing I should have done before I started doing the problem here is I should have started thinking about, okay, so what values of x can we not use, right? I should have thrown those out. So when I look at my first factors, all right, okay, I would say, okay, 2x minus 5 can't equal to 0. So 2x can't equal to 5. So x can't equal to 5 halves. So i got to throw 5 halves out. And this one's a little easier to see. All right, I have to throw 3 out. All right, so I should have done that all right, before I started the mechanics of the problem. So I apologize for that. All right, so now when we look, all right, here's where it becomes a little bit more complex. So notice in the numerator here, this is 12 times x minus 3. All right, so this would be 12 times x. So that's 12x. 12 times negative 3 is negative 36. And that's all over x minus 3 times 2x minus 5. And then over here, this is 3 times 2x minus 5. So i got to do 3 times 2x, which is 6x. 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15. And then once again, now, this is all x minus 3 times 2x minus 5 in the denominator. So there I have my common denominator. All right, in much the same way, right, I had 16 over 40 plus 15 over 40. All right right there. So now that's what I have. So now that I have my common denominator, I can add the contents of my numerators. All right. So now once again, we have to follow our rules for combining like terms. So 12x plus 6x is 18x. And then negative 36 plus negative 15 would be negative 51. All right. And then that's all over x minus 3 times 2x minus um, 5. All right. So now all right, and with, this gets into the last step here. So normally we want to check to see if we can reduce, right? So to reduce, I have to have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. Well, when I look at my numerator right here, all right, I can't reduce that. There's nothing to factor out, all right? I guess I could factor out a 3. Um, that would go into that. So I notice I could take a 3 out of the numerator, and that would give me 6x minus 17. I guess that's the only thing I can factor out. And notice that doesn't help me really much because notice I still don't get a common factor. But you might have to do that to see that you don't have a common factor. All right. And so now what I know is that that is my final answer. All right. So then if I think about my domain, 
we said it's going to be all real numbers except x can't be 5 halves or 3. All right, and we said that that we can just leave it, and then we can just leave that answer, all right, in factored form. There's no need to go back out and multiply it back out. All right. Okay, so now let's look at um, problem two now. All right. So when we look at problem two, all right, so right away, all right, you can see that problem two is a little bit more complicated. All right, so when I look at number two here, all right, and I'll do a little bit of work here and I'll add my paper to it. I can see that I already need to do some factoring here. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and factor the numerator because once again, we might have some common factors, right? And if we can reduce before we start the problem, that's always good. All right, so now I'm going to have x minus 5 times x plus 5 over, and then once again, I'm not going to show the, the area model for factoring, so if you need to do that on your own, pause the video, go ahead and do that. All right. And so when I factor this, I'm going to have x and x. I'm going to need the factors of negative 14 that add to be 5. So that would be positive 7 and negative 2. All right. And then I have minus x plus 3 over x plus 7. All right. So what I see is I don't have any common factors on the left side to cancel out or reduce that. Same thing on the right side. All right. I do have domain issues, though, right? So when I look at my domain, right, x can't be negative 7 right there x can't be 2 right there, and then once you get over here, it can't be, all right, um, negative 7 as well. We've already accounted for that. All right, so now when we look, notice x plus 7 is common to both denominators. Good. But I have an x minus 2 in the left-hand denominator, so I need an x minus 2 in the right-hand denominator. All right, so this is where I'm going to have to manipulate just this right side and much what we did in problem B above in the opener. So I need to multiply this side by x minus... 2 over x minus 2. All right, so now, all right, we have a common denominator. So now I'm going to have x plus 7 times x minus 2 here, minus, and then x plus 7 and x minus 2 here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and just take this back to its original because we're going to eventually have to combine like terms. All right, so I'm going to make that x squared minus 25. All right, now, once again, this is x plus 3 times x minus 2. So I have to FOIL this. All right, so x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 3 times x is 3x. And then 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. All right, and that's just a little bit uh, more in-depth than some of the other problems, right? Now, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup work on the left side. So we still have the x squared minus 25, which is good here, over x plus 7 times x minus 2 minus, all right, and then if I clean this up, this is x squared, negative 2x plus 3x is x, and then minus 6 like this, and that's all over our denominator like that. All right, so now we can start combining, right? All right, so we know our common denominator is x minus 7 times x minus 2. All right, so x squared minus x squared is 0x squared, so they're done there. And notice I don't have any x terms here, but then I'm subtracting x. So that's going to be minus x. And then I have negative 25 minus negative 6. So that's negative 25 plus 6, which would be negative 19. All right, so there's my um, answer. Now, notice the only thing I could possibly do here if you wanted is you can factor out that negative 1 out front and get to x plus 19 here. And once again, notice while I can factor out that um, negative 1. It doesn't really help me because I don't get any more common factors. All right, so there would be our final answer. All right, so let's look at one more problem. All right, um, together. All right, let's look at number 3 once I find the right page here. And then we'll be done with this video. All right, so once again, we look at that, that fraction on the left side. All right, I can't see my factors, so I need to factor that and see what we have. All right, so I'm going to have 12 over, and this is going to factor into x and x. I need the factors of negative 24. That's going to be add to be 5, so that's going to be uh, positive 8 and negative 3. All right, and then plus 3 over x minus 3, like that. All right, so you can see right away that this is very similar to what we just did, right? I can, um, let me do domain first before I get to that. I almost always want to do that, skip over that, get so excited about the process. So notice in my first factor there, we can't have negative 8 because that makes it 0. 
can't have three in my second factor, and then once again, another three there, but we've already accounted for that. All right, so what I was saying is that now we're very similar to problem two, right? X minus three is common in both denominators. X plus eight is in the left-hand denominator, so I need to get it common to the right-hand denominator. So that means I need to multiply by X plus eight over X plus eight. All right, so when I do that, I get 12 over X plus eight times X minus three on the left side, plus, now once again, we gotta distribute, so three times X is three X, three times eight is 24, and then that's all over X plus eight times X minus three. All right, and then real quick here, if I add my terms in the numerator, I only have the one X term, so that would be three X, and then I have 12 plus 24, which would be 36, and then that's all over X plus eight, and X minus three. Now, once again, that final step, if I look for that greatest common factor, right, in the numerator, I can factor out a three here. And once again, notice I can factor that out, but it does not help me much because I don't get a common factor. All right, so you can see that this is a little bit more involved, a little bit more detail in the process, but it is a very concrete process. All right, so do your video check-in, and we'll talk about how to use all of this material with solving rational equations next time.